the items you're about to see can be purchased on my eBay website at Whitney Labrie Events. Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. I hope that all of you are enjoying the holiday season. I have a special little haul today for you. The first part is going to be quite a bit of Petite Princess from the 60s. And then after that, I have a box of unusual miniatures. Some are going to be vintage or antique. And some of them, I have no idea what they are. So I will absolutely need your help in identifying some of the items. Now, what's really special about this Petite Princess lot is that it was a donation to me by a friend of my family. They had these items and they asked if I would take them and take what I want because I am a collector of the Petite Princess and then make sure that the rest of the items got into the hands of other collectors. And I thought that was really a cool thing to do and to give these to me so I can put them out there. I am keeping some of the items that I found in here but I will not be presenting them today. If you want to see those, they're a little bit more rare. I will be posting them on my Facebook page and I can also post them to the community page as well if you'd like to see them. So the first item that I'm pulling out of the box right here is the Grand Piano. And this I think is the first time that I have personally ever had one that came in the box, which is really cool. I'm going to go through this little bag right here. I can see right away that it has the little princess stool that came with the Grand Piano and the metronome as well, which is really fun to see because that's typically lost. Normally, there would also be a music sheet that came with it, but I'm not seeing it in here, and that is something you could easily print up and have sitting um, on, the, on the piano. What I also love about the piano is all the amazing details and the stickers. It just has this gorgeous, brightly colored, what I would say maybe like a French provincial feel or Rococo kind of feel, Baroque feel. All of these stickers on this piano are all here. They're in good, good shape. And look at the detail, just so beautiful. This is also another piece I have had, but not in the box. So I'm not sure if this was some of this stuff was ever played with, but let's take a look. So this is the princess bed. And unfortunately, right off the bat, I can see that it is broken. The headboard is in a, like a blue silk, it's tufted. And then the bedding itself is also the blue silk. I can see that there is some yellowing on the bed. That's kind of indicative of the age, although you can find some that don't have it, but usually some of the satin finishes are going to be yellowed. And then this headboard would just snap right onto the back. Now this little piece here, this is the top finial that would go on the top on the top of the headboard. It at least is a clean break and it looks like it could be repaired. But unfortunately, it's broken today, so that's sad. And then I just want to take a quick look at the at the bedding itself. I just love the lace and the little pink ribbons and the gold trim. And then of course the roll pillow and everything is attached so you don't have to worry about it ever getting away from you or getting lost. Now here is the dining hutch that comes with this collection. I love this dining hutch so much. I am a big fan of the color red and I just love that this has so much red in the collection. And this again, never played with. You can tell immediately the drawers maybe have never even been opened. Everything looks beautiful. The feet are all in great shape, not a scratch on it. So more than it just coming out of the box maybe originally, I don't think that he was even placed in a house. All right, so what else do we have here? We have the vanity. So the vanity came in pink and it also came in blue. All right, so the first thing I'm seeing is the stool with a lace trim and it does have a little bit of yellowing on it too on the top you can see. So I'm gonna put that aside. We've got a couple little bottles. We'll take a closer look at that. And then when I pull it out, immediately I'm noticing that it is also in really good shape. So it has like a Fomica top on it with gold fleck in it, which I love. And then underneath, what I also liked about this collection is you can see just the really fun details on even the legs. They've added like a little floral detail there. The back is going to be, this is a nice shape. It has like that velvet, feel on the back of it which kind of gives it a little bit of a higher end quality versus having a plastic back or just a tape back mirrors in good shape everything looks really good on this now what's really special is the fact that this has some of the perfume bottles that came with the original setup you can see here in the photo it shows several different ones and this one has two of them 
which is again kind of rare to come across these because you don't do that very often <laughs> usually those were the first things to get lost right or trashed all right so now we've got a sofa and it's the curved regency sofa and it came in several different colors and so this one is the gold and it has just some of the glue you can see on the side has browned again that's a very common thing that happens to these pieces so really when you look at this it's really in good shape for the age the pillows are all removable while the seat cushions are removable uh, that's good and bad right because sometimes they get lost but these are all here everything's in nice order the backing is still together sometimes it will slightly come apart and so you could glue it back but this one you won't need to do that and the base of it look it's perfect Now it does look like there's several sets of the dining chairs in different styles. I'm going to put those aside and we'll kind of just take a look at those at the end. Now this is fun. This is the table set that comes with the layered table. It comes with the bird lamp and a picture. So let's see if all of that is in here. All right, so this is unusual for me as well. I've never seen the original box that the lamp comes in. So we have the table. It's in really nice shape. Nothing's wrong with it. And then when I go to open up the lamp, look at that, fresh out of the box. That's impressive. Again, I don't think that these were actually played with. Maybe the person that owned them had purchased them for a dollhouse, but then never bought the dollhouse. And so they wind up just sitting for many, many years. From what I know, they just sat in a garage for a really long time, for like 50 years. Here is the photo that comes with it, uh, the framed wall art, I should say. And you can see right down, not even in the center, just kind of over to the side, there is a discoloration. That is a common theme in these photos. Okay, it looks like we have another vanity set. Oh, but this one is in pink, where the other one was in blue. This one is pink. And it also has a little bit of yellowing on the fabric. The top is in good shape. There's a little bit of a, I would say maybe like a deformity in the fabric. See how it's kind of pushed back a little bit. I think with a little bit of, maybe a little bit of water to kind of loosen it, that probably could be brought back to life. And the back is okay. The only thing I'm kind of noticing is one mirror side does has come away from the frame and needs to be glued back and of course i'm not seeing any of the accessories with this but overall good shape all right so here's the clock with the trifold let's see what it's in here so the trifold is missing from the box so what we do have is just the grandfather clock and it is not broken nothing's wrong with it it has all its finials on the top in nice shape the clock is a very common piece. There's probably a million of them on eBay right now. So I was hoping to get that trifold because that's a little bit harder. It's not difficult to find. It's just a little bit harder to find, especially in really good shape. So this is the chest of drawers and I believe it's called the palace chest. What I love about this and also what I love about a lot of the pieces in the Petite Princess line is while these are typically a 1 16th scale, which is more like Lundby or Tomy, but some of these pieces can be intermixed into a 12th scale and one of those pieces is this chest so i have used this in my 12th scale dollhouse it's actually in there right now in the garfield in the laundry room but it could easily be put in a bedroom so it's kind of nice some of the pieces as i come across others that could be used in a 12th scale i'll point those out now here is one of the guest chairs and it is in the tan or the beige and it has a very soft fabric on it. I love the shape of this, like a tulip shape, and I love the little tiny ottoman also. This chair came in other colors. It came in a, a blue, it came in a purple, of course the tan that we're seeing here, and I feel like it maybe came in red, but um, I could be wrong on that. So anyway, it's in really good shape. I'm not seeing a lot of issues with glue or, glue or anything in the seams on this chair. Now this is the salon chair and you can see on here it says 59 cents. So yes, it definitely was sitting out. Someone bought this 
a long time ago for 59 cents. That's amazing. And this salon chair is probably one of my favorite chairs in the whole line. The, the seat cushion is removable. You can see it has this silk fabric in this beautiful red, and it does have a Asian theme to it. You can see cherry blossoms on it, and it's just a gorgeous chair, just a really fun fabric that they used. And this is very on theme for the time period in the 60s, mid-century, a lot of Asian inspired themes and furniture were very, very popular at the time. So it's no surprise that this furniture line would have had that, that fabric. Here we have another salon chair, so that's good. So we have two of these and you can see the, the Asian style houses on the back. And then we have uh, more chairs again, and I will get back to that. We also have another of the palace chests. So we've got a couple of those. And then moving on to the dining table. So one of the fun things about this line is all the faux marble that of course is, you know, plastic, but they did a really good job. And on the dining tables, they did this green faux marble with these Roman column pedestals. So it has just this really, it does have a very fancy regal look to it. And then this table, it does come with a wall print, so some more wall art. And then these are the pedestal legs that go to the base. They would also typically have the same kind of regal Roman trim around the bases, but you can see that it's missing, which is also a common, a common theme. So you can see it here what that would look like if it had it. Okay, so here's another table, same kind of setup, but this one is missing even the trim that's on the table. Top, tabletop. And then here we have the floor candelabra and it is f fully gold with this really cool twist base on it. And then I love that all of the shades are in this bright red. Again, going with that same, that, that red theme that we see throughout the entire line. Here we've got another clock. Hopefully this one has the screen inside, uh, which it does not. <laughs> and uh, this one too has more of a, the finial on the top, they had a couple different ones. So you have one that's like a sharper point, and then you have another one that has more of a rounded point to it. I don't know why they decided to change the model a little bit, but they did. I'm guessing maybe it was just a different version that came out later. So here's a fireplace and it does have some of the original accessories with it. So I see some of the wood. It has the andorons that come with it. And let's see, and it looks like it has a little gold basket that would maybe hold the wood. So that's cool. It also has the mirror and most of the trim on the mirror is still on there. One piece is loose, which is not bad. It can be easily glued. It's nice to see that all the trim is there because a lot of times that's missing. And then you have the fireplace here and it also has that same dark green faux marble. This is another piece in the collection that can easily be intertwined into a 1 12th scale living room. I again have used this. It won't be as grand. It would be more like a smaller fireplace for maybe a bedroom or something like along those lines, if you know what I mean, or maybe a smaller library, something like that. Uh, so anyway, moving forward on this box here. so. This box, this is actually, even though it's the Petite Princess line, this is part of the Princess Patty line, which they, I don't know why they named it later. My guess is maybe they came out with a dollhouse or something later. This originally didn't have a dollhouse. It had almost like room boxes that you would purchase and can put them together. And you can see it says Princess Patty on it. Back, it looks like there's a dollhouse there. One of the things I'm not sure of is if there was ever a wooden dollhouse that went with this line. Like I said, I know that there were room boxes and then later they had a plastic dollhouse. And when I say plastic dollhouse, I mean it was one of those dollhouses that had that very thin cardboard and then it would be covered in plastic with really nice graphics and then this one had a fold down front that then when you folded it down, it had like a yard or something in the front. And it was really cute, but those didn't typically always hold up because over time when the furniture would sat in there, the cardboard flooring would start to sag quite a bit. Still very cool though. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I ever come across one uh, in the right price range and condition that I'm looking for, I would certainly want to grab one. So here are all the chairs right here that I have. So we've got three different ones. We've got the tall, uh, we've got the armed chair, which is the host chair. We have the 
armless dining chair, which is the guest chairs. And then these taller ones with the tall back are the hostess chairs. And so we've got three different ones and we've got several sets of all of them, except I think I only have one set of that armchair one. Now this is a trifle that was in this box, but this is not petite princess. This is however a piece that you could intertwine with a 112 scale. And this is made by Marks. This was made around the same time as the petite princess line. And a lot of times you'll see these two brands mixed together like in vintage lots. But this is actually Little Hostess and came with the Little Hostess line and it goes beautifully with the Ideal Petite Princess line. So here's the second box that I that was donated to me. And again, right off the bat, we're seeing another beautiful red and gold hutch. And I didn't open the doors, but the doors to the hutch also open. You can put your cute little dishes and stuff inside there. So yeah, great shape. Again, probably not played with. Now here's the round coffee table with the same green marble top. And this would initially have come in a set with some tabletop accessories. I think it came with a lighter and a picture frame and I think a little Buddha statue also, or some sort of statue that reminds me of Buddha at least. <laughs> All right, here's another one of the guest chairs. Chairs. This one is condition wise, it's integrity is still there. There's no broken legs, but you can see that it is yellowed and has some gluing issues. Uh, just that the gluing has made the piece turn yellow. Here's another guest chair and another salon chair. The issue with both of these is that they're missing their actual seat cushion, which is a total bummer. <laughs> and then here is one of my favorite chairs also in the Petite Princess line. This is the drum chair, and you can see it's in this really pretty gold or bronze color. The seat cushion is removable, and it has this very glittery feel, which we all know I'm a big fan of the glitter. And then here it comes in the blue also. It's got a little, little sticker on it. We'll just pull that off. So gold and blue, and like a turquoisey blue also, both very glittery. Here we have another clock, good shape, no issues. And then the layer tables, we have three more of those all in good shape. Three more coffee tables. These are the square Regency coffee tables. I'm sorry, these are the rectangle Regency tables. They're all in good condition. One top does look like maybe it has been re-glued, uh, but otherwise overall good shape. And then here we have the two tiered end table. And then this is a table uh, that I actually haven't had before. It's the tilt top. And I believe it was sold in a set with a lamp also. So I'm gonna try to tilt it back, but I always get nervous when I do this on camera because I'm afraid to break something. So I'm just going to lightly try, can't do it. So I'll just put it aside <laughs> and do it off camera when I feel like not all eyes are watching me break something. <laughs> Here we have a couple more of the grand piano stools. Here we have a couple more of the dining chairs. We've got the host and host this chairs another fireplace here this is another little ottoman looks like it might be on its own just the little tan or beige ottoman here's another guest chair this one is in the gold so it came in blue gold and red again condition wise it's this one you know you can see some of the gluing it's got some smudging on the side uh, but it is missing the seat and then here we have another candelabra. This one, of course, is missing not only the shades, but the middle, middle candle too. And this is a super cute little fuzzy red rug. And I haven't ever seen it as part of any sets for the Petite Princess. So I'm going to guess that this either went with something else or it's just a little handmade piece that someone did. And then here we have a few more accessories. We've got a few more loose accessories here. We've got the fireplace androns, a couple more of those looks like it's a little bit of wood and then another bird lamp and of course with the petite princess stuff these are all going to be non-working lamps and then I have this little bag of miscellaneous brass pieces it looks like and a few of the little brass buckets or baskets that would have sat on the side to the fireplaces that would have held more wood. So there's a couple of those in there. And then this is cool. We've got a little family. These are all just the vintage posable families. I think this is actually, this is the very first family that my mom ever bought me was this exact family here with the dad with the tie and the mom and then the daughter and the son. And what's funny, this one has this extra doll. This, is, this must be like the crazy aunt. So like this would be me and my family, like the crazy aunt 
aunt who never had kids <laughs> doing miniatures, you know, whatever. But I will say that the family itself, they never were played with. You can tell every single one of them, they're in perfect shape and they all have their tags on the back still. So they all have a little tag on the back, which is funny because those tags were not made to stay forever and they would immediately fall off when you started playing with them. And this is what the family would have looked like that goes with this petite princess. It's called the fantasy family. You can see mom's in her little red salon chair. Okay, so here is another amazing tulip chair and this one is in blue. Good shape, a little less yellowing than the other one that we saw, but still a little bit is there. But beautiful condition and uh, no ottoman though, missing the ottoman. Moving forward, we have another one of the gold drum chairs another piano, another candelabra. So it's nice to see a couple doubles on some of these things. A few, this is the coffee table set. This one would have come with the rectangle coffee table. And then you've got the, I'm gonna say a, a wine decanter and then a leaf. And the leaf, I always thought that it was an ashtray, but I think it could also be just a decoration. I mean, everybody smoked back then. So one of the tables does come with a lighter. And so I always thought that the leaf was the ashtray but so that's neat to see those accessories it would have had some glasses too uh, but i'm not seeing those in there all right so here's the other round coffee table and we've had a couple of those again this is i'm not seeing any of the accessories that would have gone with this so it's just the box and then here's the tea tray or the wine tray <laughs> or the scotch and it's brass and it has these red and green trays that both go inside. And then in there you can see there's a couple glasses, but no decanter. It would have had a yellow decanter. But one thing that I am seeing is it has three glasses and one of those go with that other rectangle table set. So I'll move that over to go with their correct set. Okay, so that's pretty much everything, all the petite princess stuff. Now I have this other box. It came in the original lot that I purchased a couple years ago now, and it's just another box that's just been sitting so far in my garage now for a couple years, just waiting for me to go through it. And there are quite a few items in here that I do need your help with because I don't either know them or maybe don't know what they're called or maybe don't know what they're made out of. So the first thing right off off the bat are all of these pieces right here. I can see that they're vintage items that they're made of what I want to say is like some sort of wood. They almost feel and look plastic but they have pitting inside you can see where the wood was being shaped and they're just really shiny and some of them go together and um, see how pretty I mean they're they're beautiful but I just don't know what they're made out of. And of course, these are not 12 scale. These are like just collector minis and uh, or they're more like doll scale and they have no markings. None of them say like Japan on the bottom or anything like that. So I'm just really unsure of what these are. All right, then we have this really nice, I wouldn't say it's a true red, but it's has, you can see there's like a burgundy field for it, probably some pink within it. But anyway, it is a nice size wool rug. It's just sitting in here. Again, I, when I sell these rugs, I don't clean them professionally. The most I do is just vacuum them out so they're not super filthy. There's a lot of accessories in this, so I just am going to highlight a few of the pieces and then I'll do clusters. So I'll organize them and then we'll kind of take a look at them that way. This is a really pretty little piece here, hand painted. The top you can see has been chipped off. And what do you know? <laughs> this made me laugh because I had just done the Zoltar machine using those little plastic cubes. And then here I go and I pull out a gypsy kind of done in the same way. The base though does feel wooden and then the top they use one of those little little cubes, the plastic cubes. And then inside you can see she's a vintage doll. She's pretty, but her nose is chipped off, which is really unfortunate because I can see that she's been in here for a while. But anyway, then she has her little crystal ball there to give you your future. And then the trim, there's a few little pieces that just need to be glued. And then here is the top to it. So that's nice that it is at least a completed, a completed item. This is pretty, this is a, it looks like a laser cut. The wheels do rotate. It's in really good shape and it has that added lace and pink bow to the top, which is super cute. 
I don't, I'm not seeing any initials on it. Now, this box has quite a bit of this. So it's these miniatures that are like mid-century miniatures, right? But they're not 12th scale. They're just, again, small, need-to-own miniatures that would be really great on a collector's shelf or inside um, a little cubby or something like that. This one is really pretty with these really bright yellow and red colors. No markings on it. But I'm going to guess that most of this is going to be Japan or occupied Japan, occupied Germany, that type of era. So maybe 40s, 50s. This is a shoe, a souvenir shoe. I'm only seeing one of them. Beautiful color. Again, don't think that it went to a doll per se, but maybe had a matching one with it and the most i can think of is like a souvenir type of item that you would pick up on your travels all right and then this doll right here <laughs> is obviously the suit is faded and you can see by the glove and the socks that this is michael jackson however sunglasses the interior of them has been broken out or just fell out over time and so this actually to me does not look like Michael Jackson at all. It actually looks like James Brown and Rick James had a baby and this doll is their baby. It just, <laughs> it makes me laugh so much and I hate to laugh at somebody's artwork. I think it just, it probably initially the doll was fabulous and now just like over time it has become this, this guy. And there are some initials on the bottom. It says 1984 and then it says either C, what I'm guessing is a YH or GYH. It's I, I tried to find this, those initials, but I just could not find them. And it's such a fun doll. And if you know anything about it, let me know because I obviously I cannot find anything. But if anything, the doll does bring me quite a bit of joy. You can see on the undercoat here, the original color of the suit, it's it's very faded. It's a bummer. It, it obviously sat in the sun in the window or something like that. All right, and here's another doll. Now, this doll, I suspect, is by a maker by the name of James Carrington. He is an English doll maker. He's very well known. I asked my friend Larry Ann, who owns the Small Wonders doll house shop in Ventura. I went to her and I asked her what she thought it was, and then that was the name that she brought out. And the main reason is because he's well known for his really great character faces, but he's also kind of known to have these dolls with bigger hands and big feet of which this doll has those characteristics but also just the face itself a face with a lot of character and look at the nose and just the hair is super wild now i don't i doubt that it had shoes ever i'm imagining because the feet are so detailed but he certainly could have had other accessories or maybe a hat the base of it see there's like a little booty pad there to help keep his little cape out Maybe I should wear a booty booty pad myself. I got a little little flat booty going on back there. Maybe a little booty pad would help. But anyway, so I did try to find a way to contact him to ask him if this is one of his dolls so far. I have not had any luck um, getting in touch with him. So, but if you know, if you recognize this, I think most of his stuff is kind of one of a kind. Obviously the clothing here is not in that really good of shape. The hair though, I feel like it was made to be kind of like this wild hair, uh, but maybe he did have a hat or something else going on, or maybe he stood on something. I don't know. But if you do, please put it down in the comments. I'd like to learn more about this doll. If you have any information, that would be fabulous. Thank you. Uh, this piece right here, I don't think it was intended to be a dollhouse miniature. It's quite tall. It has more like a buffet feel or like a doll furniture scale. It has this really neat fish in the center. And I think there might other be another animal in there. It's kind of hard to tell. But anyway, it is wood and it would be a really fun piece just to have other miniatures displayed on it, especially again, like on a shelf or in a cabinet, something like that. All right, this right here is kind of a neat item. I think it's a piece of material that someone either drew on or painted on. It would be great if someone took this item and did a true frame on it, maybe a glass piece on it. They taped or they glued 
the material onto like what looks like a piece of cardboard or something. So I would I don't know if this would be like really like a high valued art piece, but it certainly is different and it is very pretty. Again, if you know about this, because it does feel like maybe a piece of silk that someone painted on or drew, and it kind of has a feeling of pencil or charcoal or something like that, but I don't know enough about it to really assess it. So if you know more about it, please put that in the comments below. All right, so here is a really pretty chair, pan painted. I think that this is Bez Pack. It's just sitting in the back corner here, and on the bottom it says 40 for the set. So you may not see this chair on eBay today, and the reason is because I have still other boxes that I haven't gone through, and it will take me some time, so I will probably put this aside to see if there is actually a set that it goes to whether it's a table or three other chairs. So just know that if you're looking for it. Now, ironically, the Princess Petite Princess Hall and this one do not go together. These are two different places that I got these items from. But this little black table right here, it's also a tilt top and it is also part of the Little Hostess. Uh, collection and so it would have gone very easily with that trifold screen that we saw with the gold front and it's the same scale so it's funny that I got two tilt top tables in this two separate halls that would go together <laughs> uh, which is kind of cool and then this is fun this is a little item here what is this oh neat it's a little scene it's got a base to it there's a deer and it's all in a in a side a walnut and basically that's it in a nutshell <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just over here cracking myself up with these high quality jokes. It is incredibly cute and there's no way that you can say that that's nothing special. <laughs> oh my god, I'm such a dork, you guys. I don't know how you put up with me. All right, let's move on. <laughs> This is interesting. I don't know if this is a planner or a trash bin. It is handmade though. It's got a little bit of a scalloped on the edge and on the bottom it says ABS. I feel like I've come across some ABS stuff before, but for the life of me, I cannot think of the, uh, the actual name to the seller <laughs> or the maker of that. So this, I believe, goes with the uh, that original pot that I pulled out earlier. Again, the top is broken off. It says Carino on it, and so I'm guessing that this is maybe Italian. Carino means cute in Italian, and so that's kind of cool to think that maybe it is from Italy. Again, it doesn't have any maker marks or anything on the bottom of it, but... I really personally haven't seen a huge amount of miniatures coming out of Italy. And so this is kind of a special little treat. If I'm right, you know, I'm just kind of making that up. <laughs> I love this little set of people here. They're a perfect little diorama couple sitting here on this piece of wood. Uh, they do look handmade. Their clothing is actually in really great shape. It's beautiful, beautiful colors. I love it. I love their faces. This is some good detail for this small scale and uh, no marking on the bottom either. All right, so let me go ahead and take the rest and just organize them so that we can look at them. So the first thing here that catches my eye are these little pots. And these are actually salt pots and they're from Germany. But the miniatures in me goes, wow, these are really pretty planters for the dollhouse. <laughs> But they have that luster wear interior in orange, also very pretty. So here's a couple also really nice little vases. These again, more like an Asian theme. I've got it in the blue and then the burgundy. And they both look to have these gorgeous hand painted flowers on them. They will definitely be sold as a set. I have another vase here, solid wood. A couple unmarked vases. These right here are definitely mid-century. They both say Japan on the bottom and they are a matching set. This one is Limoges. Very pretty, a gold pitcher, a floral pitcher with gold handle. This, I'm guessing, uh, it says Japan on the bottom. I think that this is a toothpick holder. But again, would be a very pretty planter or tall vase and a dollhouse with a Victorian lady on it. This little pitcher right here, I really love it. Has a very Grecian feel to it. It has some writing on the bottom that I literally cannot make out. I've taken photo, I blew it up trying to figure out what it says, but for some reason I just cannot read it. This pretty little piece here, it's not ceramic. 
I feel like it's like a resin or something, which is unusual. I could be wrong. It does not feel the same as the other items that we're seeing included in the group. It feels less expensive, if that makes sense, like a cheaper material. Uh, although I've always loved that blue and white together. Very pretty. Here is another Lusterware pitcher. You can see that it's similar to the other, but this one is not German Germ from Germany. This one is Japan made. Pretty floral print. Here's another one of the taller pitchers. And this one is vintage, is vintage Inesco. And then these three little vases all here are Japan. And I did find one as well that is in a blue that actually says Occupy Japan. So I'm going to guess that these are all probably around that same time period. All right. And then these little houses are... <laughs> It's so funny. Okay, so I've got this little set of houses. This first one right here just says Wade, uh, Wade England. I thought that that top maybe came off, but it does not. I don't know if this went to a set of a whole bunch of little village houses or something along those lines, but it is ceramic. This is a this is a metal thimble. This is made in England as well, and it just is a little in, and it is very heavy. And then this little Christmas house is just a paper box. I don't know what this has this went to originally, but I'm wondering if this was like a candy box or something at one time. All right, other items that I found was this little guy right here. At first, I thought maybe he was like a shepherd for a nativity scene or something like that. But when I really kept looking at him, the clothing made me think that maybe he's wearing a kimono. So I'm not sure, but if you know, again, please help me identify. I haven't seen him before, I'm just very curious. This is obviously a chess piece, uh, metal. This Bruxel figurine right here, this is a fountain boy, a peeing fountain boy. He's actually a pretty common doll or a common statue. So kind of cool though to come across him. Love this owl on the book. Love him so much. And of course, when I see him, the first thing I think of is Harry Potter. He's actually a decent scale for a Harry Potter 12 scale scene. And so he's like a resin material, pretty lightweight. Love him. And then this comical little couple right here, they're made to look like wood, but they're more like of a composite resin type of material. They look like they would really have a hilarious time together making jokes in the kitchen. She's got her rolling pin. Uh, she does seem to have a little issue with the nose, like it might've been chipped off or something. So anyway, they definitely go together. And then this guy back here, you know, he's missing an arm. He's metal. He's like a pewter figure here. I don't know what that symbol means on the bottom the maker symbol i'm not familiar with it at all if you know what that is please let me know i'm thinking greek god of some sort but i don't know again please help me identify and put your comments down below so that we can all learn all right so here's some different vases that i have this one is a, a rooter i'm guessing a rooter germany piece uh, then we've got a couple other really nice little vases, a pitcher, that blue one there says Japan on the bottom. So I'm guessing that maybe went to a set. We've got some wood items, some silver cups, a couple of porcelain pieces, ceramic items, a Liberty Bell plate, a glass plate, another gypsy crystal ball here that's probably a handmade item, a couple glass items. This is a pretty glass milk pitcher. I love this. I love this piece here. It's one of those old antique stoneware jugs with the red wings and it's so cute. Oh, knocking stuff over. But anyway, look how cute that is. Yeah, that might be one of my favorite pieces here. And then we've got another ceramic pot here. All right, and then some more pots and planners and jugs. Like we've got this plastic bell and then we've got this, this is wooden and it's like a Southwest style pot that someone painted. This uh, could easily be a planter, but it looks like a, more like a doll scale spittoon. And then here we have one of the old oil lamps, just a metal one. Another Southwest jug here or pot. This is a bead that someone plugged at the bottom of, but I love the color in that. And you can see, look at this ceramic pitcher right here. Another one of my favorite pieces. Not seeing any markings on it. Again, if you know the maker, 
Here's another ceramic pot. Now these are neat. These are wooden cups. That looks like an apple. So some golden apples in there. Uh, another little ceramic pot has a tiny chip out of it. Um, this ceramic pot also, I love it. I love the unevenness of it, so pretty. And then this is a Durham Industries metal bowl right here, and it would have gone with the hand mixer, the old school hand mixer, uh, which I have not come across. And then here's another ceramic bowl or pot. pot. Uh, this one has a hole at the base, so it would definitely need like a little, a little planter tray underneath, you know, for the water. Speaking of water, this needs some water. Look at that thing. Woo, has that seen better days or what? <laughs> that poor plant. Uh, then we have this little vintage planter box right here. And then some flowers in a globe. Got some vintage food. I'm thinking these are olives. Those look like a bowl of olives. Uh, that's a big bowl of resin vegetables. It has a couple chips. Here we have a really bright green ceramic frog. I'm gonna say that that's probably mid-century as well. We have a little giraffe in ceramic, a cute little fish bowl here with a golden, with a goldfish inside. And then this little guy, I think he's a little polar bear is what I'm guessing. And that is a necklace charm. All right, this is a neat piece. I don't know what it is. Maybe you can help me identify it. It's metal, it's very heavy. It has the fleur-de-lis on it, I think is what it looks like and some other floral motif. It has a hole all the way through, so you can see right through it. My guess, I, I want to, does this, I think it's probably like a cap on to something, like a finial to something. But anyway, let me know what you think it is, uh, or if you've seen something like this. Other than that, we've got these tea, teapots, and looks like a sugar bowl and a creamer. None of them go together. This may be another object that you don't see on the eBay website if you're looking, because I have lots of this sort of thing that I have been collecting out of this really large lot in hopes that I can put some of these sets together that go together. Now, moving over to these plates, I have a couple of these little miniature plates here. These are both Limoges. You can see here someone wrote a thousand across there, or I'm guessing it's probably ten dollars. And they're right, that's about what this little plate is worth. Uh, this one also, this one has the stand connected to it. This is also Limoges. You can see there on the back that it's printed. So a few Limoges pieces in this lot today also. All right, so now we have a few other cool metal items. They have this little swing small scale this is also durham industries so this in the bowl that we saw earlier those were part of the holly hobby line that durham industries put out uh this is petite princess also this would have been the base to the planter that was a part of that line back here we have a high wheel metal bicycle very cool and then we've got a souvenir lady liberty right there and then ironically from the makers, uh, we've got a miniature little frame here from Paris. And then this poor little guy here, man, has he seen better days or what? <laughs> this is a patio rocker, I would say, and it is made from that very thin metal. It could be German made. Let me know though if you know if this is a German piece. All right, next set, we've got some cleaning items. I got oven cleaner, a basket, some cheer, and a little sewing spindle there, some different little books. We've got some metal items, a comb, a spoon, a little cat bead, a finial, an earring, a basket there, like a fireplace basket for wood, a non-working lamp, and then this plastic chandelier right here with these bright pink bulbs. And then this little lamp right here, I feel like I've actually come across it before. This is a really cute little baby right here sucking her thumb, blue-eyed little baby. And she might've been glued down to something because when I turn her over, I'm not seeing any markings as far as signature, but I see a little piece of foam or something there. Like maybe this baby was glued down to something at some point. And then this piece right here, it might be one of my favorite things to come out of this lot because I thought it was just a little wooden box. But when I opened it, there's all these little pieces of miniatures inside and I realized that it's like a Japanese tea set. And so it has cups and it has the little tea set holder, a little box that maybe would have had the tea inside, and then two saucers and cups that are together. Anyway, it's so cute. And like, you can put the little lid on top and then look, you can put all the little pieces sitting right on top with it. Oh my gosh, I'm so in love with that. So anyway, see how cute that is? Oh, I'm in love. 
absolutely love that's adorable tea on the go you can just toss that in your purse and then you can take your miniatures everywhere you go so that's it for today you guys there was a lot in this haul today and so i'm so grateful if you've stuck it through all the way till the end and if you know about any of the product that you saw today that i have questions please feel free to put it in the comments people can come and then they can learn from you as well so i'm really appreciative of that if you're new to my channel and this is the first haul that you've seen just know that at this time you can jump on over to my ebay website which is whitney labrie events and you can find all the items that you saw here today well most of the items sometimes i don't put everything if i'm still researching the item or trying to get better information for you sometimes I don't or like in some cases like I said I'm holding on to an item because I feel like I maybe have a, a set that it goes to or a match to something so or along those lines if you haven't already subscribed please do so so you don't miss any other hauls if you're really into them I do them about once a month these days <laughs> also don't forget if you're interested in a tiny Whitney mug they do make excellent gifts for your other miniature friends so have a great rest of your week, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye!